We are about to explore the beautiful and extraordinary country of Malaysia. So let's jump right in and learn 10 surprising and interesting facts about the country of Malaysia. All right, so at fact number 10, I'm always interested to know what names mean. So let's actually start there. The name Malaysia is believed to come from the word Malayu or Malay, and it's believed that that came from the Sungai Melayu River in Sumatra. And that river, its name is derived from the Dravidian or Tamil word Malai or hill. Moving on to the next fact, and number nine, for many people that aren't familiar with the history of Malaysia, they're completely surprised to learn that Malaysia's official religion is Islam. Islam is practiced by the majority of the Malaysian population. Now, the constitution of Malaysia says that all Malaysians are Muslims. It just declares that for everybody. Now, Malaysians are not allowed to change or abandon their faith at all. But on the other hand, Malaysia still has a lot of residents who are not Malay. So for non-Malays, for the most part, they follow other religions such as Taoism, Christianity, Buddhism, and Hinduism. But for those who are Malay nationals, you need to be Muslim based on the constitution. Now, the next thing to know about Malaysia is that it is part of the Malay archipelago. Now, what's that word mean anyways? Well, it's a big word. It pretty much means a group of islands. Now, the country of Malaysia itself has around 878 islands, and most of which though are still not inhabited. But either way, the collection of islands that make up Malaysia, it's a pretty beautiful sight to look at. Now, Borneo is the third largest island in the entire world after Greenland and New Guinea and it's also the largest island in all of Asia. So three countries actually share the island of Borneo and those countries are Brunei, Indonesia and of course Malaysia. Now let's talk about the language in Malaysia. So there's a language Bahasa Malay also known as simply Malaysian. That's the official language of Malaysia. This by the way is different from the Malay language of Malayalam found in India. India, by the way, so a lot of people get those confused not the same language. Either way though, the official language of Malaysia, like I mentioned, is Malay or Malaysian or Bahasa Malay. So yeah, it does go by several different names, but the government sometimes refers to it as Malaysian. Also, the English language is widely used professionally and commercially, and also it's used in the superior courts. And the final thing I wanna share about the Malaysian language is that it has borrowed from the Sanskrit, Tamil, Hindi, Persian, Portuguese, Dutch and Chinese languages. It's also borrowed quite a bit from the Arabic language and also more recently it's been borrowing from the English language. That has increased a lot especially when it comes to many of the different scientific and technological terms being used in Malaysia. Let's now talk a little bit more about the government of Malaysia. Not many people know this but Malaysia is actually considered to be a federal constitutional monarchy and it has a ceremonial head of state and that is a monarch who has a title of Yang Di Pertuan Agong, which means paramount ruler. Now, when it comes to this paramount ruler, what happens is that he's elected from among nine hereditary state rulers to serve for a five-year term. And now the paramount ruler, that's the person that appoints a prime minister from among the members of the House of Representatives. And then from there, with the advice of the prime minister, the monarch then appoints the other ministers who make up the cabinet. All right, guys, so we reached halfway in this episode. We got a little bit of an inside look about Malaysia, how the country is structured, a little bit of the word meanings and the languages and all of that. But we still have five more facts to get through. All right, guys, so let's get into fact number five now. Malaysia is an extremely busy country when it comes to visitors. So check this out. It's estimated that more than 450,000 people cross the Malaysia-Singapore border every single day. And they cross by using the two land crossings across the Straits of Johor. Now this makes it one of the busiest land borders in the entire world. Next thing I want to share at fact number four is Malaysia also holds a pretty interesting world record. Now it's not what you would think it is though. It's kind of random, but it's reported that the largest roundabout in the entire world is located right in Malaysia. It's in Putrajaya and the roundabout in Putrajaya 
width is 3.5 kilometers in diameter and that equals 2.7 miles. Now, although sources do say that Putrajaya has the world's largest roundabout, there is some dispute about this though, because some sources say that the Savannah located in the port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago actually holds a title for having the world's largest roundabout. But either way, as it stands, for the most part, it's recognized that this roundabout in Malaysia is the biggest in the world. Now, I had to include this at fact number three. Te Tariq is Malaysia's national drink. Now, the term actually means pulled tea. All right, so what is this anyways? Well, it is a hot milk tea beverage, but it can also be served cold as well. Now, they say to effectively mix the flavors of the tea, you actually have to tarik or pull the tea between two pitchers repeatedly. Now, this is how the tea can stretch and blend together and generate foam. So once the tarik is boiled, it's then strained into a mug and then the tea is poured from a height of about a meter, which is about three feet or so into another mug. And then the process known as pulling is repeated several times until froth is formed over the tea. And the pulling process actually cools down the tea. But it's not just a delicious beverage that has an interesting process to froth it and cool it down, but also tarik competitions are an actual thing. They're organized all throughout Malaysia and you can see people actually pulling tea in the most creative way possible and they throw in some dance moves as well. This is an actual sporting competition, for real. Another thing to note about Malaysia is this. The country is made up of two main land masses. Now there is what's known as Peninsular Malaysia and it's also known as Malaya or West Malaysia. And it's the part of Malaysia that makes up the southern half of the Malay Peninsula and the surrounding islands. Now its area is about 332,265 square kilometers, which is approximately 40% of the total area of entire country of Malaysia. Now the other part of the country is known as Malaysian Borneo or Sabah or Sarawak and Labuan, or most commonly it's referred to as East Malaysia. Now this is a part of Malaysia on the island of Borneo, like I mentioned it was the largest island in all of Asia. Now, the final thing I want to share in this episode when it comes to the country of Malaysia is this. Kuala Lumpur, also known as KL, is the capital of Malaysia. Now, the words Kuala Lumpur literally mean muddy confluence. And if you're not familiar, confluence is just a fancy term for the point where two rivers intersect. Kuala Lumpur is a metropolis, big, booming area. And it actually got its name because it was founded near the place where the rivers Klang and Gongbak intersect together. Now, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, metropolitan area's population is about 8 million people. Starting at fact number 10. So there is this term, Hari Merdeka, and it's also known as Hari Kebangsan, and that means National Day. That is actually the official Independence Day of Malaysia. The Malayan Declaration of Independence was officially announced on the 31st of August, 1957. And the efforts for independence was really spearheaded by Tunku Abdul Rahman, and he was the first prime minister of Malaysia. Now, transitioning over to a pretty sad fact, the Malayan tiger is a tiger subspecies that is native to peninsular Malaysia. The Malayan tiger can be found in the southern as well as the central parts of the Malay Peninsula, and it also has been classified as critically endangered on the IUCN red list. And as of 2019, the general manager of Pirex State Parks Corporation, Mohammed Shah Redza Hussein, he said that the species could become extinct in the next six or seven years if immediate action isn't taken and like these measures need to be drastic measures. In a statement he said this, about seven to eight years ago we had more than 60 tigers in Bilam Temengor but the latest studies showed that there are only 23 left in this rainforest. This shows that the population has declined by about 60 percent. If you don't take action now I'm sure within the next next two or three years, we would have less than 10 tigers left, which is not enough for reproduction. And within six or seven years, the species will be extinct. Now, despite 
despite all of this though, poaching continues to run rampant in Malaysia. Next up at fact number eight, this church here, St. George's Church, it was established back in the year 1816 and it's an Anglican church that's located in the city of Georgetown in Penang, Malaysia. And what's significant about this is that it is the oldest Anglican church that was built for use in Southeast Asia. And on the property of the church, you're going to find a memorial for Francis Light. Now in the year 2007, the St. George's Church became the only structure on Penang Island to be declared one of Malaysia's 50 national heritage treasures. Now, have you heard of the Penang Bridge? The Penang Bridge is about 13.5 kilometers or 8.4 miles long and it's a dual carriageway toll bridge and also a controlled access highway. The bridge connects Butterworth that's located on the mainland side of the state with Gelugor on the island crossing the Selatan Strait. This bridge was inaugurated on September 14, 1985 and it is the first road connection that goes between the Malay Peninsula and the island. Now the bridge is also pretty well known. It's known as the second longest bridge in Malaysia and it's also the fifth longest bridge in all of Southeast Asia. Next Next up, I want to talk about the Perdana Putra Complex. Now, this is located in Precinct 1, and it's right over the Putrajaya Lake, as well as Putrajaya Mosque, and it also overlooks Dataran Putra. It's a six-story structure. It makes up the Prime Minister of Malaysia's office, as well as the offices of the Deputy Prime Minister and the Chief Secretary to the government. It's also a pretty unique-looking structure. The design of it is also really interesting because the Perdana Putra Complex really uses elements from Islamic Mughal architecture and they mix it in with Southeast Asian architecture and then boom there you go now for fact number four Mount Kinabalu over in Malaysia is the highest mountain in the Malay archipelago as well as it's actually the highest mountain in all of Malaysia. Now it's said that the mountain as well as its surrounding areas are some of the most important biological sites in the entire world. So check this, it's estimated that there's between 5,000 and 6,000 species of plants as well as 326 species of birds and more is also listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Quickly, I want to talk about the currency in Malaysia. The currency that's used in Malaysia is actually known as the ringgit. Now, what does that even mean? It's a unique term. Well, it means jagged in the Malay language. And this also refers to the edges of the Spanish silver dollars that were used in the 16th century, as well as throughout the 17th century. Fact number three, we're talking about this fruit here. Now, this is native to Malaysia. It is the pomelo, and it also goes by the scientific name Citrus Maxima. Now, this fruit, if you didn't guess it by the scientific name, it's a big fruit. As a matter of fact, it's the largest citrus fruit in the world. It can reach a size of about a small football and it weighs up to 2.2 to even 6.7 pounds, which works out to be one to three kilograms. Now the taste is said to be comparable to grapefruit. I personally haven't tried these before, but the fruit also is known as jabong or jabola, depending on where you go in the world. While we're on the topic of talking about the biggest things though, I do gotta mention the Sarawak Chamber. The Sarawak Chamber is actually the largest known cave chamber in the entire world by area and it's the second largest by volume. Now it's located in Gunung Mulu National Park in the Malaysian state of Sarawak. And they say that this cave chamber is so big that it can fit 40 Boeing 747 planes without the wings of the planes overlapping each other just to fit in. No, side by side, they can just stack in there, 40 of them. And we all know 747s are massive planes. And the final thing I wanna share in this episode is about Jimmy Choo. Well, if you didn't know, the world famous shoe designer, Jimmy Choo, was actually born in Penang, Malaysia back in the year 1948. Ladies love his shoes celebrities, royalty has even worn his stuff. But although currently Jimmy Choo, he's in his 70s now, he's sitting on a net worth of about $50 million. The company Michael Kors Holding agreed to purchase the Jimmy Choo company for 896 million pounds, which worked out to be 1.2 billion dollars. So there you go, one of the most renowned shoe designers in the entire world 
came from the country of Malaysia. That's definitely something to be really proud about. All right, guys, so that brings us to the end of part two of 10. A country that is not only beautiful in its natural state, but through its culture, architecture, and voice of its people, it has stood out to the rest of the world. And this is the country and people of Malaysia. So first things first, we gotta talk about when it comes to Malaysia is its population. And it is a strong people of 31,394,000 people on a landmass of 330,803 square kilometers. This makes the country the 44th most populous country in the entire world with 92 people per square kilometer. But see, it's not just its people that makes it a beautiful place. As a matter of fact, it is also its land. For example, Malaysia is known for having an amazing cave network, which people come from all around the world just to see and explore. For example, the Clearwater Cave stands at the eighth largest cave in the entire world, being 250 15.3 kilometers long. But there's also the Sarwak Chamber, which is one of the biggest chambers on the entire planet. As a matter of fact, it is the largest chamber by area in the entire world, and it is so big that you could fit a 747 inside the chamber. Now, like many countries in South Asia, Malaysia has had multiple names. For example, Oria Shersonius was one of its original name, which meant the Peninsula of Gold. And this came from the famous Greek writer and astronomer, Tony. But the current word for Malaysia is believed to have come from Malaya, which is a river in Sumatra. Now the country also shares land on one of the biggest islands in all of South of Asia. This is the island of Borneo, and it is the third largest island in the entire world. And the island itself is divided up between Malaysia, Brunei, and Indonesia. Now Malaysia's also got one awesome record. It is the largest roundabout in the entire world. The Persian Sultan Salahuddin Abdul Aziz Shah is a roundabout that is 2.2 miles long and it is located in Pretijaya. Now we all know that South Asia is known for having a lot of English speaking people and this is obviously due to the fact that the British owned many of these countries. However, Malaysia was the first country to have an English speaking school in the entire region. The Penang Free School was built and founded on October 21st, 1816. Divers come from all over the world just to see the marine life. Species like manta rays and sea turtles which use the area for mating purposes, Malaysia, a country of beauty and change. With a vast amount of biodiversity and cultural diversity, it is a place where one can see the natural and historical aspects of life, which makes us reflect on who we are as human beings and responsible caretakers of this planet. It is Malaysia, the country called the Peninsula of Gold, but it is a treasure of peace, prosperity, and above all, life. So with many people thinking and agreeing that Malaysia is an interesting and beautiful country, what are some things that we can discover more about this particular nation? Well, they are spread across 13 states and three federal territories, with each territory and state having its own separate flag, which is a little bit different from regular countries. For example, Sangalangor de Rul Ashan, with the capital Shah Alam, is the largest state in the country, with a total estimated population of 5,874,000 100 people. But for land mass, this has to go to Sarawak with a total land mass of 124,450 kilometers square. And although these different states and territories have their own flag, which is very interesting, they also have their very own license plate letters. Now these are prefix license plate and they're all alphabetical. And out of all these states and federal territories, none of them are vowels except for Parak de Rul Rizdwan, which has the letter A for its license plates. So we got all all these different states, we've got all these different cities within it. My question is, what is the capital of Malaysia? And that goes to Kuala Lumpur, which is not only the capital, but the only alpha world city in Malaysia. And basically what that means, it's the only city that competes on a global economic scale. Now its population is roughly 1.73 million people in its federal area. And throughout its federal territories, which is approximately 243 kilometers square, it has 866.1 people living per square kilometer. But if you incorporate its agglomeration of other cities, it's a lot bigger. Sometimes called as the Klang Valley, it has approximately 7.25 million people and it is considered one of the fastest growing cities in all of Southeast Asia. As for Kuala Lumpur, it itself is one of the three federal territories within the country. And although it is the capital of the country, ironically, it is not home to the capital building. The capital building of the country, Perdana Putra, oddly enough, is placed at Putrajaya. And this building was completed and in function by 1999. 
But Putrajaya is a city itself that is considered another federal territory of the country. And I gotta say, looking at this thing, it is one of the most beautiful cities that I've ever seen. Although it may be only home to 88,000 people in 2015, the city is considered a planned city in order to deal with the overpopulation from its next door neighbor, the city of Kuala Lumpur. And oddly enough, this city or federal territory is relatively new, as it only gained its status in 2001, with the city and the capital building being named after the first Malaysian Prime Minister, Tanku Abdul Rahman Putra. Now let's move away from human technological achievement and their buildings, and let's talk about nature, because Malaysia is really important. Malaysia is a very, very special place when it comes to our connection to nature and animal life. This is because Malaysia is home to the oldest rainforest on the planet. The Balloon Temengar Forest has a tale that is all the way from the Mesozoic era of history. Its age puts it at over 130 million years old, covering approximately 290,000 hectares, which is pretty much almost as big as Singapore, guys. Let's just keep that in mind of how big this rainforest is. And although part of it has a protected national park, about two-thirds of the forest still remains unprotected. The forest is home to the original Orang Asli, who are aboriginals who have very little knowledge of the outside world, and still live in their huts hunting off the land. And unfortunately, one of the worst things about this forest, two thirds of it is still in danger of severe logging. And not only is it just plant life that's important within this rainforest, but it holds 14 of the world's most threatened animals and has more Malayan tigers than any other place in the country. But however, when it comes to land, let's talk about elevation. When it comes to the country, Malaysia's average elevation is roughly 1,765 feet. And as for Mount Kilabalu, it is the highest mountain in the country. Now, Kinabalu Park is also a UNSCO protected zone. Being inscribed in the year 2000, it is the 20th most prominent mountain on the entire planet because of its topographic prominence. And this is because it's home to so many plant and animal species. For example, when it comes to plants, it has approximately five to 6,000 species, 236 bird species, and over 100 mammal species. And of course, it is one of the most breathtaking views in the entire country if you can make it to the top. This this country has some great features, and deep within the rainforest, it is home to not just the story of us as humans, but to Earth and animals' history. A history that its people strive and protect and care for, for we as the rulers of this planet have a duty among the tall and the small. And that is how I summarize the people of Malaysia.